All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Bible Reloaded. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. Uh, so the past couple of weeks, we've uh, we've covered Noah, and mm-hmm. we did another wonderful comic from our and friends. you did your, uh, your first uh, edited video, and it's getting positive feedback. Yeah, I like it. So anyways, uh, today we're going to do kind of the uh, epilogue to the Noah story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Finish her up. We're going to skip o- skim over some genealogy stuff, and we're going to get to one of our uh, more infamous stories in our opinion uh the tower of babel yeah which if you don't know anything about it you will uh in a few short minutes um but um we equally love it and hate it yep so uh, for the same reason so be prepared for all that uh i'm glad you're all back with us we don't say that enough all right so let's begin all right genesis 9 verse 18 the sons of noah the sons of noah who came out of the ark were shem ham and japheth ham was the father of canaan these were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the whole earth. So here we are saying that, again, mm-hmm. starting back at the beginning, uh, everyone on earth is coming from this one family. So again, we're getting into incest, incest. but we've covered it before, so we don't need to get right. into that in detail. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of the wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. So before we continue, if anyone who follows the show and follows... Uh me and Hugo, you know that right now I'm in a Bible literature class, uh, which is very interesting. And um, this got brought up, and the lit teacher is like, I want you to go back and tell me when anyone else has ever been drunk ever at this point. Because there's only been, like, what, 300 people tops? Mm -hmm. This is basically, his theory is, this is the first vineyard and the first time anyone's ever been drunk. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind, um, because I think uh, it makes the rest of the story funny. Yeah, I, 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 I like the whole idea of this. I think someday what you and I should do is put together kind of a biblical canon timeline as to when certain things happen within the biblical canon. That's, that's a good idea. Because I think it's it's funny, to be idea. honest, but yeah. whatever. Continuing, verse 22. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garnet and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backwards and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they could not see their father naked. So, even in ancient times, uh, and regardless of your faith, which I assume you have none if you're listening to us, but even if you're a creationist and, and a theist and you, you have faith, uh... You gotta find it funny that even 2,000 years ago, alcohol made people take their clothes off. That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, in ancient times, people still didn't want to see their dad's dick. Yeah. Um, That's a universal truth. That is. Oh, and because... Peace it's a, in the Middle East. We don't a, want to see your dad's dick. If it's Since it's a Hebrew bro- book, I'll call it a schmeckle because you like that word. I do. They don't want to see their dad schmeckle. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, so... Uh, Uncut at this point, too. Just like to put a ooh, point out. Ooh, he's got a foreskin. Don't yeah. know why you're thinking about that. But anyways, Ham saw his dad, Noah, naked, goes and tells his brothers, guys, dad's naked. And they're like, well, we don't want to see that schmeckle. So they walk in backwards, cover him w- with a blanket. Mm-hmm. No big deal, right? Yeah. Big Seems deal. like it. It's a big deal, actually. Yeah. Continue on. Okay. Verse 24. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves he will be to his brothers. He also said, Praise be the Lord, the God of Shem. Many Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. What the hell? So, uh, if if you don't know, uh, for context, Canaan is getting cursed by Noah right here. But he didn't really have anything to do with the story. His dad is Ham, and Ham's the one that saw his dad's dick. Mm-hmm. No big deal, right? The best argument I've heard for this, uh, why this happens at all, because this is confusing as fuck. Like, why is this guy getting cursed by Noah? He's drunk. Um, the only, Actually, the only argument that makes sense is that for Hebrews, it was taboo to see your parents naked. I I I, I, I guess I that. I would I agree at least to an extent. I mean, there's not a right answer because we don't have one. But if right. I were to pick one, that one would at least make sense. Right. And I think they had to find a reason to vilify the Canaanites, and that's yeah. one of the ways that they came by the origins, I agree. as we're going to get to here in a second, as to what Canaan uh, becomes, yes, and what that curse amounts to. Oh, and now we have to say goodbye to no people. Yeah, it's sad. But uh, bah, 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 verse twenty nine or verse twenty eight. 
After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Noah lived a total of 950 years, and then he died. Funny, though, earlier, as we mentioned, uh, God put a cap on that at 120, but that got disregarded pretty darn quick. Yeah, and uh, beyond that, I've read ahead, rarely does someone come on underneath that cap. I know, I, I don't it's know very, what's up with that weird, weird editing issue. But okay, this next part, uh, Genesis 10. We're Again, gonna... it's genealogy, we're going to we're gonna quickly skim over this one as opposed to just skip it, because there are some points we do want to cover as far as the content. Right, if we do, if you think we skipped something important, bring it to our attention, we'll hit you up in a, probably a pocket edition where we say we were wrong and read something funny. <laughs> um... So go ahead uh, and let's uh, let's cover some of the things that you wanted to cover with this. Okay. So as we mentioned before, the, a lot of the stories in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, mm -hmm. are kind of metaphorical. They're supposed to represent things. Right. Here is where we get the various tribes and cities and uh, various conquests from yeah. later in the Bible. It's saying that they all came from these people. Right. So the most interesting part of the this genealogy is... Uh, the Hamites, uh, which is uh, all the sons of Ham, which is the one that uh, got cursed. Um, well, he saw his dad's penis, so his son Canaan got cursed. Mm -hmm. um, this plays into the whole idea of inheriting your parents' uh, sin. sins. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting uh, because Ham's first, uh, his, his four sons are named Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. And uh, for anyone who has picked up a history book, you recognize at least three of those names. Yeah. Uh, even Cush. any even any layman knows at least the one Egypt. Right. So Cush, Egypt, and Canaan. Those are all places that we have known. Yes. Um, and two of them still to the day, uh, Cush and Egypt. Uh, so it's very interesting um, to know that in the Bible, that's how they um, reconcile where places got their names from. Yes. Is by sons of so prominent patriarchs in the Bible. Yeah. So presumably the son Egypt then and went and set up his own right. uh, maybe small community and that grew into what we know as Egypt. Obviously we know a lot about Egypt now historically and that's just not true. Right. But again, we're speaking within the canon here. And also, interesting side note, Cush was the father of Nimrod who became a mighty warrior on Earth. Uh, if you ever heard about Nimrod, uh, that's an interesting note. We're not going to go into it, but just uh, maybe just look it up. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's going to be it for for ten. We skimmed over that. If you want to read it yourself, but uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna gloss over the uh, the genealogies because we did all the genealogies. A, we'd lose a bunch of listeners, and B, we'd be here for years. And also, we'd hate our lives. Yeah. Because they're fucking really boring. Yeah, we don't get paid for this. At least if we're gonna do it, we should have fun. Yep. As opposed. To doing what we normally do when reading a verse, commenting, reading a verse, commenting. I'm going to read you this entire section because it's shorter, and then we're going to summarize, and then we're going to comment from there. So, sit back for a second and yeah. uh, and listen to the soothing voice of Hugo as he recites a beautiful Hebrew story. And also, be ready to hate the shit out of this. Yeah. <clears throat> now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them all over the face of the whole earth. So, in summation, what happened was, all the different peoples of the earth were all kind of working in one civilization. Mm -hmm. They decided we're going to have this unified place and be all together and happy and we're going to build this tower that reaches heaven because we can do anything we want. Right. It's not heaven. It's the heavens. It's the heavens. Yes, it's, correct. They're not, a lot of people think they're trying to reach God's 
domain. house or domain yeah, and they didn't go even, to heaven. They, they don't mean to go to heaven. No, at this time they didn't have an idea of heaven in the right. Jewish faith anyways. It was Sheol, which yeah. is a uh, netherworld, basically like Hades of Greek mythology. Yeah, but that evolved over time, but we're right. not getting into that right now. Right. Anyways, um... So the Lord looks down on this, uh, what we would today call a utopian society of people Absolutely. working together and building this huge tower, at least right. huge by their standards, and saying, uh-oh, it even says, working together, they can do whatever they want. I better go scramble their language. Right. It, uh, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Yeah. That is such a good comment on humanity. I mean... They're taking it the wrong direction, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. they're totally saying, like, we need to stop human progress. Mm -hmm. But what a beautiful, just a sentence, yeah. describing humanity and our capabilities. This is, in my opinion, the Tower of Babel is a beautiful metaphor for the entirety of the Dark Ages. No, I, I agree, and the thing that separates them is... God, religion, right, and uh, he separates their language. And in the Bible, this is where different languages come from. Of course, that's... Right. Silly, if you know anything about linguistics or history in general, it doesn't really make sense. But uh, I just, it upsets me a lot. Here's a few reasons. One being, let's look at the motive. They're building a tower to the heavens. So supposedly in the eyes of whoever wrote this, probably the tallest tower he could imagine. Right. But then look at the modern world and how it works. Look at all the buildings we can build. Vertical driven <laughs> the entire The entire Apollo program, but that's fine. And I, I, it seems silly, and people will comment on this endlessly as they always do. Well, why even bothering? People don't take this literally. It's great if you don't know people who take it literally. Some people take this literally. My mom takes this literally. I've right. discussed this specific story with her. She sides with God and says, no, it's cool, and believes this literally happened, and this is how language happened. So don't tell me it's a waste of time talking about this, because people do believe this, one way or another. Uh, two, think how despicable this has to be for God to be like, uh-oh, they're going to accomplish anything they want. and then to, And then to fiendishly, like, snidely whiplash, decide, we better we better stop them. And another thing, it, it uh, it's basically just... A jealous God that doesn't want to be supplanted by his creations. Where they don't need God. They can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. And God's like, no, we can't have that. They, I need them to need me. Yeah. It's, you know, it's shitty. Thanks for all that racial uh, right? racial problems that you're giving yeah. us. You're going by the canon of the Bible. Blame God for that. Not even Lex Luthor or Darth Vader would have hoped for such villainous consequences. So, yeah. A rather short episode today. Um, yeah. But well, uh, we feel like we chalked we, it full of quality. <laughs> well, no, but what, it, what's going to happen is we're gonna we're gonna be jumping into Abraham. Yeah. Uh, and we don't want to split that up. Yeah. Lo this is just logically how it how it gets broken up. So yeah. you'll have to live without us, out our long one for another week. Yeah. So, anyways, she said. Uh, uh, I think that'll do it. So. Thanks, everyone. You can share us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, stumble upon anything you want. Uh, please tell your friends about us, enjoy us, like us, subscribe, do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. Until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been another episode of The Bible Reloaded. Science Blessed. <laughs>